In this presentation, we will discuss our objectives for governmental accounting. Our objectives are to make governmental accounting more understandable, period. There are many obstacles to achieving this objective. One of the obstacles is simply defining what is governmental accounting versus for-profit accounting. What are going to be the differences? What are going to be the similarities? And then being able to focus in on those differences to be able to better understand them. For example, governmental accounting uses the same balancing concepts as all accounting. In other words, we're going to be using a double entry accounting system. We're going to be using debits and credits, a balancing concept, the debits equaling the credits. However, governmental accounting will use many different account names than financial accounting. It's going to use different accounting basis oftentimes than a cash basis or an accrual basis as we often know them in financial accounting. And it often requires the use of fund accounting, which is also a new concept. One of the problems we have when we move from financial accounting to governmental accounting is to have the idea that we're just going to pick up the same balancing concepts, apply the same double entry accounting system rules to governmental accounting, and we'll be able to pick up governmental accounting fairly easily. That's not necessarily the case because there's a substantial amount of differences within governmental accounting than financial accounting. We're going to have to learn these new account names. We're going to have to learn what the accounting basis will be. We're going to have to use fund accounting. In other words, an understanding of financial accounting and understanding of the double entry accounting system is going to be necessary to fully understand governmental accounting, but not necessarily enough to understand governmental accounting because there is going to be substantial new material that we'll need to understand. Like many other topics, governmental accounting has grown substantially over recent years. And therefore, when we think about the curriculum, how we learn governmental accounting, it usually hasn't kept pace with the amount of growth within governmental accounting. And therefore, when we consider governmental accounting classes, studying for governmental accounting, we often have way too much information in one course or one time of study, often combining things like governmental accounting and other nonprofit types of accounting together. This would make sense if we think about how accounting has grown over time and how specialized fields have developed over time. In other words, it used to be the case where we would apply double entry accounting concepts to any type of organization, for-profit, government type of organizations. Then we can think about the government organizations and not-for-profits having different objectives, us setting up different rules to apply for those different objectives. And of course, as time passes, we have more and more differences between the for-profit, not-for-profit, more regulation. And when fields expand rapidly, it's usually the case that the curriculum doesn't expand with the growth of the field in relation to the growth of the field. So we often end up with situations where we're putting a lot of information into a short amount of time to learn it. The question then is, how can we learn this information more quickly? How can we learn the new accounts, the different account names more quickly? How can we learn the different accounting basises and when to use them and how to apply fund accounting more quickly? The first thing we will concentrate on here is avoiding floating journal entries. Floating journal entries are going to be the answers to questions when we think about concepts, just writing a journal entry and not applying it to anything, not posting it to the GL, not seeing how it relates to a trial balance. This is going to be the typical way that we see answers to questions or how we discuss topics as we get into more advanced accounting classes because most people, the professors in those classes, the people that write the textbooks, expect you to basically be able to visualize the chart of accounts, how these things would be posted, what the GL would look like, what's going to be the effect on net income. However, when we move to governmental accounting, there's a significant amount of changes in terms of the names of the accounts and how these accounts are going to behave and therefore, we really need to go back to actually posting these items, really seeing them being posted so we can see the effect. We'll see an example of this shortly. We will also use a trial balance as much as possible. The trial balance will give us a list of accounts, the grouping of accounts in order, in essence, assets, liabilities, and equity. So we can get an idea of these new account names, what types of accounts they are, and therefore what the behavior of those accounts will be. And when we discuss new accounts and journal entries balancing concepts, we will post transactions to some type of worksheet so that we can see the end result to a trial balance. Here are a few examples just to get an idea of what we're talking about and what the difference will be. Many times when you look at more advanced accounting topics, something like a textbook or a professor will typically just write down the journal entry. And if we're thinking about basic accounting concepts, this is usually enough. We're going to say, oh, we debit this account, we credit that account. 
and we have enough visualization and understanding of the double entry accounting system to be able to grasp what they're saying. But if we see a journal entry such as this in governmental accounting, where we have a debit to something like estimated revenues, a credit to appropriations, and a debit to the budgetary fund balance, that we may look at this and say, hey, I, I get that it's in balance, but I don't really understand what's happening here. This seems very unusual. I don't know what any of these accounts are. I don't know how they behave. How can this be more useful? How can we make this easier to do, easier to learn? Well, it would be a lot easier if we had something that we were going to post to, such as a worksheet. If we saw a beginning trial balance and an ending trial balance, as we might see in, say, adjusting type entries, a worksheet similar to this, then we can get a chart of accounts and we can ground ourselves and say, okay, I may not know still what a budgetary fund balance is, but I can see where this is being posted to. I can see the behavior of the starting point, the change, and the ending point within this worksheet. That can give me some context, at least to start with, as we go forward and understand this. I can see that we started with something in balance. We then did something that's going to be in balance in terms of debits and credits. We ended with something in balance. That could give us some context. I may not know what appropriations are, but I can see they're down here. They're in like the temporary accounts, what would be the income statement accounts in a for-profit type of organization. That can at least give me some context. We can go from there and pick up that information much more easily if we see it and visualize it in this format, something that we can't do, even if we understand financial accounting when we move to governmental accounting because we can't visualize these, these accounts. We've never seen them. We haven't worked with them a lot before. The same is going to be true with the estimated revenues. We're basically, in essence, posting like budget type accounts here. So we have estimated revenues. It's difficult for us to visualize what that will be like if we have a chart of accounts, a worksheet that's going to be much easier for us to do. Another example, if we saw a journal entry like this and someone was just going to explain this journal entry, well, we debit encumbrances and we credit uh, encumbrances outstanding. We can talk about that and we can start to visualize that, but it's very difficult for us to see it in context because these are two accounts that we wouldn't have known. We don't really understand for financial accounting. Encumbrances, I don't know what that is. I don't have a grasp of what that is. Might help if we saw that account related to other accounts and actually posted the transaction to something like a worksheet. And at least then we could see, okay, assets, liabilities, something similar to equity accounts, something similar to income statement or timing type accounts. This has given me a more of a grasp that we can start from. And then I could say, oh, okay, encumbrance is outstanding is in this kind of area, which I would compare to in financial accounting to uh, equity. So uh, it's going to be might call something different for governmental accounting, but I could start to relate these concepts much more easily if we if we don't just have the floating journal entry, but we actually post them to something like a worksheet. Encumbrances is down here. I still may not know exactly what it is, but I can see, okay, it's down here in what, what I would expect to be more income statement type of accounts because they were, they're in the income statement location that I would expect for for-profit. And then again, I'm not, we're not going to go into the details here about these journal entries, but just that's the idea that we're going to get some more, more context than we typically would with most courses. Most courses are just going to give you the, the journal entry and then expect you to basically visualize everything else, which we can't really do because governmental accounting is substantially different.